In the distant future, it's likely that our descendants will escape to the stars. To make this journey, anatomical changes will have to be made. These creatures may not look like humans as we know them, but they will be our descendants. These are the humans of the future. Humans have lived on the Earth for 200,000 years, but this day is finite. We must leave the Earth. The Earth is simply too dangerous a place to place humanity. Our destiny is to go to the stars. The Earth is in peril. Pollution is killing the forests and the sea. Global warming will turn parts of the planet into deserts. Within thousands of years, another ice age may come. Asteroids may fall from the skies. And in five billion years, the Earth will be consumed by the sun when it expands and dies. The Earth will be scorched, the mountains will melt, and the oceans boil. The Earth is going, going to become unbearable, and we either stay and die or leave and survive. It's a law of evolution. Either change, leave, or die. It's an enormous challenge, and the first tentative steps into space have already been taken. But these are tiny compared to the giant steps that will be needed if the human race is to survive. New ways will have to be developed to cross the void of space to reach the stars. Space travel and our very bodies will have to be reinvented. First, we can go the way we are, as humans, like they do on television and Star Trek and Star Wars. We can go as computers, like we already have done with Voyager and Pioneer, which are on their way out of this solar system. Or there's a new mode, we might have a hybrid, part carbon, part silicon. It's thought that travel would take place aboard giant space arcs, or humans would be frozen in suspended animation. Biology and genetics will be used to create a new human species adapted to living in space. There's the possibility in the future of altering the human embryo so that a, a human being is produced who can function very well on Mars in a very, very reduced oxygen environment. Systems prepare for disembarkation. Intelligent robots will be sent to explore the edges of the galaxy. The human race may evolve into a new species, part human, part machine. This is not science fiction, it's science fact. The first steps are already being taken. Our destiny is to leave the planet Earth because we have no other choice. This might well be the greatest adventure the human race will ever experience. The first steps will be small. I think the real destination for humans is Mars. I think there is where the stuff that we are made of, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, exists. And I think it's, that's likely to be the place that we try to make habitable, or put some habitations anyway, for the future. In two to three hundred years, it may be possible to live on Mars. In a few thousand years, 
Mars may be terraformed into a planet with an atmosphere like Earth. But this will only be a temporary solution. When the sun dies, it will be necessary to travel much further beyond the solar system. The next major dream after getting to Mars and putting bases there or whatever will certainly be by our descendants the idea, well, can we put, reach an Earth-like planet around another star? Each year, astronomers discover more and more new planets orbiting around distant stars. Quite literally, the, there are more stars in the visible universe, and there are grains of sand on every beach on Earth. And we believe that probably there are a majority of those stars have planets. So therefore, there are more, potentially more planets in the universe than there are even stars. So the, the numbers of potential sites like that are just overwhelmingly large. We have already discovered, quite unexpectedly, large planets the size of Jupiter orbiting close to other stars and suns not too far from here by astronomical terms. So if those are there, it proves that planets are more common than some people had supposed. It's hoped that a planet like Earth will soon be discovered. I think the chances of finding Earth-like environments are very, very high, just because of the overwhelming number of potential places out there. You're going to have many, many places over and over and over again which are going to have environments like the Earth. Even if we find a planet just like Earth, enormous distances will have to be traveled to reach it. The distance to the nearest star is difficult to imagine. If the distance between the Earth and the Sun is about four feet, which in this case the Sun is only the size of a half-inch marble, and the Earth is barely bigger than the thickness of a sheet of paper, our nearest star is over 270 miles away. If you were driving a car at highway speed trying to get to the nearest star, it would take over 50 million years to get there. The largest rockets would take almost 100,000 years. Compared to the Voyager spacecraft, which was going 37,000 miles per hour as it left our solar system, it would still take 80,000 years to get there. And the fastest thing we know of is light, and that takes over four years to get there. If a spaceship could travel at the speed of light, it would still take many thousands of years to cross the galaxy. Generating enough power to travel these enormous distances is a problem. Because of these long distances, it gets really difficult to travel in space by conventional rocketry. Rockets use propellant to push themselves. If I can illustrate with the uh, balloon here. The air in here is now the propellant, and when it releases, it will push the balloon in the opposite direction. And that's the way a rocket works. Well, to go very far, you need lots and lots of propellant. The problem with uh, propulsion is that you have to carry the fuel on board, but the fuel weighs, it's massive, and therefore the more fuel you have, the more fuel you need to propel the fuel. And so as you go faster and faster, you need to bring more fuel to get to that speed, but then you have to bring on more fuel still to propel the fuel to that speed. Just to give you an example, if you wanted to send something the size of the shuttle orbiter to our nearest star, and you were going to take a leisurely pace of nine centuries to get there and use the type of rockets that are on the shuttle, there's not enough mass in the universe to act as your propellant in those cases. The other problem is speed. Only by traveling incredibly fast will it be possible to reach a new home in a reasonable amount of time. But there appears to be a cosmic speed limit, 300,000 kilometers per second, the speed of light. 